Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabansky. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and when we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today, we got a show here today, man. This, uh, this, 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 this really going to get on my nerves, but um, we got to get into it. So before we get into it, please make sure you like the video uh, and subscribe to the channel. Now, yesterday, I got some very, very uh, disappointing news. Uh, concerning Kawhi Leonard, as y'all know, um, Kawhi Leonard is my favorite player in the NBA, and um, I was really ruined for him and the Clippers. Uh, what is it to do well uh, this season? Going into the postseason, they were able to get an improbable victory in Cleveland. I mean, excuse me, in Phoenix in Game One, surprised a lot of people. And in Game Two, they came they they came pretty close to winning that game. They lost it, but however, I think it was a competitive game all the way to the end until it got out of hand. Then going into game three, after the Clippers essentially did what they had to do, which was steal one game on the road. A few hours before tip off, we got the news that Kawhi Leonard was going to be unavailable for game three. Something that absolutely jarred a lot of us out here. Uh, and we produced a, we produced a live kind of reacting to that, to that, um, uh, to that story. And of course, last night I went into the game with a negative uh, vibe. And I felt that the Clippers would lose. And in, and as a matter of fact, that's exactly what happened. They lost that game. At one point, it got ugly. But they were able to kind of rein it back in. Got it pretty close. Uh, got it to close to three points, I believe, towards the end of the game. But they lost, right? You can't count. <laughs> close, but no cigar, right? They lost the game, right? And I just remember at the end of that game just being absolutely dejected, right? Just being totally dejected. And while we're doing that live, it just kind of... <clears throat> brought back some of the old sentiments that I had about load management as a whole and its overall effectiveness. I've been one of the people that have been quite skeptical of load uh, management. And the reason I've been skeptical of load management um, has to do with really just looking at things practically. Um, really, that's the reason. What do I mean? From my understanding of what load management is load management is a construct or a system that medical staffs are deploying in order to ensure that their players are properly rested, ensuring that they're healthy to play games and they don't aggravate anything that may be um, uh, lingering, any type of injury or something like this that may be lingering by overplaying players. It also um, advocates for uh, what is it? Monitoring minutes, putting players on minutes restri restrictions, et cetera, et cetera. But I think at least what I, 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 I believe their ultimate goal is, is to ensure that players are available and healthy uh, when games matter. Now, if you follow this platform closely this season, I complained bitterly about the Clippers load managing some of their best players, in this case, Kawhi Leonard, who's my favorite player, and of course, Paul George. Kawhi Leonard, of the 82 games this season, has played 52. Played, excuse me, 52. Paul George, around that same ballpark. And the pushback I would receive was, well, what really matters is the playoffs. You got you to gotta ensure that these guys are healthy come playoff time. That was the pushback. And I kept on saying, I said, with all of this low management that's taking place, the Clippers better be competitive in the playoffs. Because if they're not, the question is going to, the, 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 what is it? The, the pertinent question is going to arise, which is, then what was it all for? What exactly was it all for? So what happened? Kawhi plays game one, looks absolutely sensational. Plays game two. Looked perfectly fine to me. Was dunking multiple times in that game. Looked explosive, whatever. Then yesterday, we get the report via ESPN um, through Adrian Wojnarowski where he said that Kawhi Leonard, and I'm just paraphrasing now, Kawhi Leonard aggravated or injured his knee or something like that in game one. This is the, this is the wrinkle in this that I think a lot of people need to be clear on. He injured his knee or something like that in game one. Then the report said that he played through it in game two. And then what they found out was that um, he needed more time to let it kind of 
heal or rest or whatever it is. And the game on Friday was a little bit too close for them. And a lot of people have been complaining about why the NBA has given the Clippers this kind of messed up schedule. And this is something that actually Paul George complained about on his new podcast, that they always get screwed with these guys. I don't understand. The Clippers and the, play- the, Clippers and the Lakers start off the playoffs on the exact same day. Clippers are play game three on Friday. Uh, excuse me. They play game three on Thursday. Excuse me. Lakers are playing game three on Friday. Lakers, Clippers are playing game four on Saturday. And I think Clippers, uh, Lakers are playing game uh, game five, I think on Monday or something like that. Something a little bit strange about that. But I don't want to get into that right now, right? Because we can't really go back and control that, whatever. But the report said Kawhi got injured in game one. So if we spent this entire season managing this guy's body and he gets injured in the first game of the playoffs, what exactly was the purpose of load management? What exactly was the purpose of load? Ma- what exactly did it prevent? This is the word. This is the operative word here. What did it prevent? Because from my understanding, is a preventative measure. That's not working. Players are dropping like flies left and right. They're more injured than ever before. So yesterday I had to go back and kind of comb through the information and, and, and because I'm, I was trying to gain a better understanding of what the hell is actually going on. Then I looked at it and I looked at Kawhi Leonard's season splits. Beginning of the season, he was playing in the low 20s. Then he ramped his minute up min, minutes up to the high 20s. Then he ramped it up to 30 minutes a game, 32 minutes a game, 35 minutes a game, 37, and then they ramped it back down. And I think what is happening is that Kawhi Leonard's body, and I don't know this, but I'm just speculating here. Kawhi Leonard's body is going through a shock because of the minutes of, 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 of the spike in minutes. You have a guy that's used to playing around 35 minutes a game. You're now spiking him up, you know, pushing him up to about 44 minutes a game. That's a jump. And the question is, is the body ready for that? Well, absolutely not. How can you be ready for something you didn't prepare for? I'll repeat that once more. How can you be ready for something you didn't prepare for? If you train to run a 50-yard dash consistently, and then all of a sudden you get to the you get to the meet of the competition and they go, okay, now the, 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 you're going to be running 100 yards. What do you think is going to happen? You're either going to get injured or you're going to get smoked in that race because your body is not conditioned to handle that level of intensity or workload. And that's exactly what happened, which goes back to the point Paul George made, which I think carries more weight than anything anybody's saying in the comment section. Because Paul George is number one a player in the NBA, current player in the NBA, that currently gets low managed. And he feels that the reason that this thing is not working is because your RPM is really high, then they drop it down low for a long time, then they spike it up really high, and they, and they said this leads to injuries. As opposed to, the intensity being high for a longer period of time, then you drop it down, then you ramp it up again. He said teams don't even practice anymore. They don't even practice anymore, which is one of the reasons I find it absolutely comical that some experts out there are telling me that these are the most advanced NBA players of all time. It flies in the face of evidence, and it seems more like it's just a personal sentiment that you have that you want to make reality. Because if we look at the evidence, if we look at the evidence, there's nothing that suggests that. How can players be more advanced now, but they're less durable? How is that possible? Advanced at what exactly? So to me, this is a very tricky situation, but I think low management as a whole is not working. And Kawhi Leonard is the evidence of that. Now, some people will say, well, Kawhi Leonard has degenerative knees and maybe he's a special case, but then we can just comb through the the, the, the NBA and look at all the other guys that are getting injured. They don't have the uh, the degenerative knees. It's an issue. And it doesn't seem to be working. And I'm not the only one that holds this position, by the way. I was just listening to Rob Parker on the Odd Couple with Chris Broussard. And he said the exact same thing. Don't just accept things because people that look smart told uh, told you those things. And therefore, you just accept it as truth. Think with your brain. Reason things. Ask yourself, does this make sense? And if it doesn't make sense, you question it. You question it. You don't just accept it and run around and say, well, so-and-so said it, so therefore it's true. If that's the case, then why did LeBron James get multiple opinions on his injury? Why didn't he just go with the first doctor? 
Why didn't he just go with the first doctor that told him, hey, you may need to get surgery? He said, no, I want to get another opinion. I want to get multiple opinions on this issue. So think with your brain first. A lot of people don't think. They just follow what people tell them, especially people that have suits or on TV for whatever reason. These are my thoughts. Whatever you guys think, leave your thoughts in the comment section. We catch you on the next show.